to God. If you've got your Bibles, would you turn to John chapter 3? And we're going to look at one verse of Scripture. You know it well. You probably don't have to even turn there. John chapter 3, verse 16. We're going to look at one verse of Scripture tonight. And I want to share with you something that God laid on my heart this weekend. That's, that's good for now. Amen. I'm, I have no intention of holding you very long tonight. Amen. Uh, I have th- I got three pages of notes tonight, verses six that I had this morning. So y'all, don't, we won't be here an hour, amen, unless the Lord holds us. But uh, I want you to just listen, if you will, and with, I want to just share some thoughts with you tonight. But uh, if you've got your Bibles, you can look with us, look on the screen there. So we know the verse well. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Let's read it together, can we? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray tonight over the reading of God's holy word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in this house tonight. Thank you for that sweet presence uh, that we feel in this place tonight and we just give you all the glory and honor and praise for it. God, thank you for the reading of your word. Direct our steps tonight, direct my words tonight and may it touch hearts and change lives. In the name of Jesus, we ask right now and everybody said amen and amen. Tonight I want to share with, some, share with you something that the Lord laid on my heart this past weekend on Friday night. Um, I had an opportunity that I, I got away Friday and Saturday. I went down to Fernandina and stayed. And sometimes I like being alone, getting by myself. And if you read in the scriptures, you find that Jesus often would tell the disciples, He said, come away with me. Let's get alone together, away from the crowd and away from the noise. And can I tell you, it's liberating to get away, to turn your phone off sometimes, and to get away from people, amen, and get along with Jesus. And Friday afternoon, I spent some time there out on on the beach. I like to be on the beach and fishing on the surf right there and enjoyed that. And uh, I love just talking to people. People will come by there, and that's a conversation starter if you're fishing. I don't know why, but people want, what are you fishing with? What are you catching? What are you doing? And so I enjoy talking to people. And one thing I love to do, and I think I got this from my grandma, she would always say this. She would say, I love to go to the zoo, but not to look at the animals, but to look at the people. And she said, people are the most amazing thing in the world just to watch them. And they're peculiar and they're different. And, you know, everybody's different. It's just, it just blows my mind. And so I love to watch people. I love to look at people. And, uh, and, and we were just out there fishing. Honestly, it, we were, it wasn't very many people there fishing. But that evening when I got back there to the, back to the room and was sitting there out, out, out on the balcony that evening and the moon was coming up, beautiful evening, for some reason, I was just looking out. My, where I was at was not on the water, but it was back a few streets, and there was houses in front of me, and down across the way, where I'm going to stay on the north part of Fernandina, you can see there's a little bar that's on the beach and a restaurant and all that stuff. And as I looked at, 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 the, at the houses, and what sparked it was these two young boys walking in the street and walking in their house. For some reason, my heart just became very heavy as I just looked out over these houses and looked over this area and at some of the people that were walking there that evening. And God just began dealing with my heart uh, just about the sin of the world. And, and I don't know why this came upon me. I don't know why this thought came to my mind as I was looking and just looking at, at people. I just began to think about the sins of uh, of the world, and I began to think about how much sin is just in the world. And I began to think, I, I had been reading about the Ten Commandments earlier uh, uh, that day, and I began thinking about those things. And I want to share this with you real quick in Exodus, and then I'll get on to, with the rest of my sermon. Listen to these verses of Scripture about the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. And God spoke all these words, saying to Moses, He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. And then he gives them a list of commandments. He says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall make for yourselves, you shall not make for yourselves a carven image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and to the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, um, to those who keep, uh, who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Sometimes we need to read back through these and be reminded of them. Amen? And that's what I had done Friday, and God brought these up to me that evening. He said, you shall not take the, Lord, your, the, uh, the, the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Hmm, think about that. He said, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and shall do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. It, in, in it you shall do no work. You shall, excuse me, you nor your sons nor your daughter nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. You need a day of rest and a day honored unto God. I want you to know that. It goes on to say, Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor, then he says, your father and your mother. The, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. The King James says you shall not what? Kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. In other words, you shall not lie on them. Amen. Verse 17 says, And you shall not cover your neighbor's house, and you shall not cover... Uh, your neighbor's wife, your, nor male servant, nor female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Amen. And some people look at the Ten Commandments and say, well, that's not for us today. That's in the Old Testament. That's, but I believe that there is much of the Word of God, or all of the Word of God is to be applied to our lives. Amen. And there is one thing that is obvious about the Ten Commandments. It is this. They make, they, the Ten Commandments make us aware of our sin. The Ten Commandments make us aware of our sin. What do you mean? God said, do not... Uh, it says this on the front, right there in verse 16, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. In other words, do not lie. How many of you have ever lied in here before? If you, ain't, if, if, if you sit there and tell me you hadn't, you're lying right now. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Every one of us. And do you know what? I could stop right there. I don't have to go through the rest of the, uh, of the Ten Commandments. Why? Do you know what, G, what God said? He said, if you've broken one point in the law, He said, you've broken them all. Amen. How many of us have coveted something that our neighbor has had? Woo! Or his wife, his house, his car, his, his motorcycle. Amen. Glory to God. We coveted within our heart. Do you know what the Ten Commandments makes us aware of our sin? And do you know what it does? It points to that we need a Savior. That we have fallen short of God's law and God's will and we are in desperate need of a Savior. That's exactly what the Ten Commandments does for our lives. It points out our sin. It points out we are in need of a Savior and there's nothing that we can do. But I began, I had read over these and was just, for some reason I had read over these and earlier that day and as I was saying, as I was looking out, looking out over these houses and, 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 and the people there, God just began dealing with my heart about the sin of the world. And I got to thinking as, as I looked out over all of these people, I got to thinking about these Ten Commandments and I, and I went down them and I got to thinking about it and I said, God, as I look out there and I look at these people, how many of them are serving false gods? How many of them have a God before uh, b that is not you? How many of them serve um, idols? It may not be a graven image. It might just be that almighty dollar that is in their pocket. But how many of them, oh God, have turned away from you? Do you know that the Pew Research uh, that does research on Christian things and all of this matter, they say that there's roughly 7.5 billion people on the planet. And 2.5 billion of those people are Christians. That's what their research says. And if you think about that, that means that 5 billion people on the face of the earth are not Christians. And I said, God, 
How can you love? You said, for God so loved the world. How can you love so many people who don't love you? I just began thinking about that. I said, God, how can you love, God, so many people who do not love you? You said you love the world, God. And I was having this whole conversation. I hope there was nobody on the balconies on either side. But I was just having this whole conversation with God. I said, God, your word, I know your word. And you said you love the whole world, but yet, God, I just, I don't, I just don't can't grasp it tonight. All of these people, how, how many of them, Lord, how many of them, Lord, are living so deep in sin? And then I went on and said, I said, Lord, how many of them have taken your name in vain today? Probably every one of us in here today are guilty of that very same thing. How many times have we hit our toe and we yelled out? God, or God Almighty, come on now, might not be GD, might have been in another way that we use the holy, reverent name of God. I said, how many God in this world use your name that is just nothing? You know what amazes me? You cannot turn on the TV anymore on just a normal uh, TV station without hearing them say GD anymore. It's unbelievable. I said, God, how many today are using your name in vain and you still love them, God? I said, you still love them? You still love them though they do not honor you any days of the week? And I began to think about it. I said, God, about how many liars are in the world? How many thieves and murderers I began to think about those sitting down there just right down at that restaurant in that bar. I said, how many of them down there, Lord, are getting drunk right now? I read that scripture this morning. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be drunk, be filled with the Holy Spirit, didn't it? I began to think about how many that were sitting down there on that beach or down there in that bar were coveting, was coveting somebody else's wife, coveting somebody else's husband, coveting what somebody else had. I said, God, you mean to tell me you love all of these people? You love them, Lord? How many of them right then were committing sexual immorality? And I began to think about all the sin that was in front of me. And I just began, I was overwhelmed, church. As I thought about all those people that was just right there. I'm telling you, I'm a people watcher. And I watch people and I think about people. And I just thought about those few that were before me in Fernandina. And my heart was heavy and broken. And what was even more overwhelming to me was this question, do they even know it, Lord? Do they even know it, Lord? Do they even know what they're really doing? Do they really know that they're even living in sin? And I saw what got it was these two teen boys was walking, walking home from the beach, it looked like, and they went into this apartment. And I said, God, do they know they need a Savior? I just began just, just pouring out my heart. I said, God, do you love them too? And then God took my mind from just there about just the sin right there in that. I said, I said, Lord, what about New York City? All the people that's up. My mind, I would just, my mind would be blown if I went to somewhere like that. Amen. <laughs> See all them people. Amen. I said, what about all the people in New York City? All, all that sin that's being committed there. You still love those people, God? Las Vegas, New Orleans. These different sins. I said, God, you mean to tell me you love all of these people, God? And I just couldn't grasp that the other day, Brother James. It was just blowing my mind when I thought about all of these people. And I said, God, how can you love this world that is so deep in sin? How many of you believe we live in a sinful world today? And I said, God, how can your love be that great? How can your love be that great that you can love somebody that will curse your name? How can your love, God, be that great, Lord, for somebody that worships, uh, that, for someone that's worshiping another God beside you? How can you still love them, God? How in the world is that possible, Lord? I said, God, I know your word. I know that you said in your word that you, uh, you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. But how can your love do that? How can your love do that, God? And then I began, you know what I began to think about? I got off the sins of the world. I started thinking about my own sin. I started about my own self, Brother Wayne. I said, God, how can you love me? 
I said, God, how can you love me with the things that I have done, the things I have said, how I have rebelled against you, how I have done things knowingly I shouldn't do it and done it anyway, how can you possibly still love me? Anybody ever been there before? You knowingly, you knew that something, a particular thing was wrong. You knew it was contrary to the Word of God, but you did it anyway. You said it anyway. Anybody ever been there before? Every one of us. And I thought to myself, I said, God, how can you love me? How can you possibly love me, God, for the things that I have committed? Amen. How is that possible? I see so much sin, Lord. I see so much wickedness. How could you possibly love such a world in a fallen condition? How could you have that much love? That's what I asked him. I said, God, how could you have that much love? Amen? Think about it. It's a big world. We Sometimes we get all lost in our own little bubble right here in Eccles County and Jennings and Lake Park. But man, it's a big world out there. There's a lot of people. I said, God, you love all these people. You love people like me? How can your love be that big? And as I stood there on that balcony, I'm just talking to God, just going away. And it's like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. As I'm looking at these houses, I'm looking over there. He said, lift your eyes a little higher. Lift your eyes a little higher and look out there at that ocean. He said, look out there at that ocean. And it's just as he spoke to me, he said, get your eyes off of that for a minute and look out there. And he said, my love is just like that ocean. My love is just like that ocean. I said, God, what do you mean? Your love is not like that ocean. Have you ever been to the ocean before? You ever been to the beach before? That's one of my favorite places. I just love to go to the beach. I love to be out there fishing in the sun. Whatever. Have you ever stood right there at the beach? See how that, the sand is where the waves are coming in? Have you ever just stood there in the early morning and it's like the sun just come up out of the ocean? And like all you can see is you look out, there's just nothing but water. One author wrote this. Listen to this. I found this quote this week. It said this, God's love is like an ocean. You can see its beginning but not its end. And boy, as I looked out at that ocean, God remembered, reminded me. As I stood there, looked at that ocean... He reminded me how small I was, even how small my sin was compared to His great love. Well, when you stand at the brink of that ocean and ocean and you look out there, let God remind you about how small you are, even how small your sin is compared to His great love for you. God's love is like a vast ocean, my friends. And I want to just share with you some things that I thought about this. God's love is, is an ocean. First of all, it is this. It is vast. It's not big. It's massive. It is huge. Do you know that our oceans on, on the planet here, do you know that the oceans cover 71% of the earth? 71% of, of our globe is covered by water, is covered by oceans. They are massive. The average depth, the average depth of the ocean, and all of them, is two and a half miles deep. The deepest point in the ocean, in the Mariana Trench, is the deepest recorded point in the ocean, and it is 36,000 feet deep. If you don't know how many feet deep, how, how deep that is, it's 6.8 miles deep. That's a deep ocean, isn't it? Can you imagine water 6.8 miles down? Down, amen? That's from here all the way out to the interstate. That's how deep that is. That's crazy, isn't it? 6.8 miles deep. Do you know what you can do? If you were to take the Empire State Building, y'all ever seen it before? You could take 30 of those. This is National Geographic here. They said you can take 30 Empire State Buildings, even with the little crest on the top, and stack them on top of one another, and that's how deep 
the Mariana Trench in, 30 of them buildings. What in the world are you getting out here today, Pastor? God said, my love is like an ocean. And that ocean is, and the ocean is extremely deep. You know what that tells me? Surely then God's love can cover our sins and the sins of the world. As God was speaking to me, as I looked out there at that ocean, Brother James, he said, my love is like that ocean. And if God's love is as vast and as deep as the ocean right here on this earth, my goodness, surely it can cover our sins and the sins of the world. Surely it can. It can cover your sins. I don't care how many you got. I don't care what's in your past. He says, my love is deep enough. My love is wide enough. My love is great enough to cover your sins. Do you know what God himself said in Micah chapter 7? He says this in verse 19. He says he will uh, again have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. To the depths of the sea. I guess that means that Mariana Trench is about seven miles deep. He's going to cast them right there to the bottom and to be remembered no more. Amen. Covered up and gone. That's the love of God tonight. I said, that's the love of God tonight. To take all of you. If you have never gotten broken about your sins, then you need to pray for God to break your heart, amen, about the sins that we commit against God. Sometimes we take too lightly our sin. And I was just broken this weekend about it, but God said, my love is enough for your sins. Not only yours, but all of the world. Isn't that a great love? Isn't that amazing? That God's love covers not only of us right here, these 60, 70 people here tonight, it covers all the world. That's a great love. I don't know about you. God's love is enough. I said God's love is enough. God's love is enough. If it is vast, then it must be unsearchable. If it is this vast and if it is this great, then the love of God is unsearchable. You know what I read also in National Geographic? I was looking this up, talking about oceans. As to date, in 2018, this is what they say. Our oceans are so vast, 71% of the globe is covered by water. They say that only 5%, we have, have, let me say it right because I don't want to mess you up. We have only explored 5% of the world's oceans. That's coming from the National Geographic, 5%. In 2018, the year of the iPhone, go look it up. I've looked it up on more than one place, I promise you, before I share it with you. We have explored, I'm talking about in-depth, explored in-depth, not just rowed over in a boat now. Don't get, don't get thinking, well, we've been a, explored only 5% of the world's oceans. That's how vast the world's oceans are. Do you know what? That's exactly like the love of God. There's no way that we can dare even begin to understand, be even to grasp, or even uh, to touch the great love of God. It is unsearchable. God's love is unsearchable. And by that I mean that we cannot possibly know it all. You know what I have found out? Just when you think, just when you think that you know the love of God, we find out that He has more. Just when you think that you have reached the end, that surely God must be done with me this time. Surely God is just fed up. He is sick of me. Surely I have extended to the end of God's love. God will show up in a new way that you never imagined. He'll show up in a new way. God's love is unsearchable. God's love is unsearchable. You know what? We serve the God of not just second chances, but we serve the God of third chances, of fourth chances, of fifth chances, of sixth chances, of seventh chances, and tenth chances, and right on down the line. You say, how many, how do you, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I can explain it to you in Scripture. You want me to explain it to you in Scripture in Lamentations chapter 3? I love this passage of Scripture because I need it often. It says this, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. 
But because of his passion, because his compassions, his love fails not, that every morning, they are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. God's mercies are new for you every single morning. And so when one day you have just totally fell flat on your face and said, I've just, I've just used up all of God's love today. I've just used up all of God's mercy today. Don't worry. Are you going to get a fresh, fresh batch in the morning? Amen. He said His mercies are new every day. I love that. Every morning you wake up, you got a new day. you got a day to start over. So when you fall flat on your face, why don't you just stay there for a few minutes and you cry out to God and say, Oh God, forgive me. I need yours or more of your mercy. I need more of your love and compassion and grace once again. And then get back up and keep moving. Because God's love don't dare want you to stay in that fallen condition. God's love is great. God's love is vast. God's love is unsearchable. You cannot get to the end of it. Hmm. Lastly, God's love is powerful. God's love is powerful. Have you ever been to the beach swimming before? That's one of my favorite things to do. Look like a whale out there, but I love to go swimming. I'll share this story with you one time. Maybe I've shared it with you before. I used to go, we, me and Nick or some friends of mine, we'd always go to Daytona for about a week in the summer. I didn't get to go last year. But the first year we went, when we go to Daytona, if you go down to the Ponce Inlet, I don't know if you know where that is, Ponce Inlet, the, on kind of the south end of Daytona, is where the river comes out there in the ocean. And you can go down there, Ponce Inlet is where they used to race uh, cars too, where, where really NASCAR got started down there, a lot of this racing did. And they, so we go down there, this big beach, and we fish, and we swim, and the first year we went, the water was unusually clear. I'm talking about Daytona, Atlantic Coast, and we're out there in the waves, I'm up this deep in water, and I can see my feet. I mean, that's how beautiful, that's how clear the water was down there. And we're out there talking, and, and, and I'm facing the shore, and Nick is facing me, and we're just talking, we're just having a good time, and all of a sudden, he just turns ghost white. Just as pale, just as white, man, as a sheet. And he says, what is that? And I turn around, just kind of turn around, and there's a dark shadow behind me. It's a good 10 foot long. All you can see is this dark, because the water was clear looking. All you just see is this real dark outline, at least 10 foot long. I screamed like a girl, and I almost walked on water. I was treading water, baby. <laughs> if you don't think I was moving, buddy, you'd be dead wrong. Jaws wouldn't get me today. No, sir. I was rolling, buddy. Screaming, just shoom. Come to find out it was a manatee. <laughs> that, that comes out of the river and goes along the shore there and, and feeding and all of this good stuff. But you talk about being scared to death. I was getting out of there, I promise you right now, amen. But when, when you're out there swimming, I found this to be true. When you're a little kid, you know this is true when you go out there. Man, them waves, I was watching some little kids out there the other day, and that little wave would come and just roll that little kid just like that, wouldn't it? And you think when you let them, I'll be laughing at them, you know, they roll it. And, but I've been out there being, you know, 200 pounds, and you think, well, these waves ain't going to knock me down. But you know what I found out? They can roll your big behind too, amen? <laughs> One good wave comes in, and guess what? Bam! And you washed up out there on the shore, amen, like Shamu or something. Can I tell you, can I tell you, I said that to say this. One wave of the love of God can wash away your sins and knock you down and restore you today. One wave, one wave from His vast ocean of love today can totally change your life, amen. One wave, one wave, come in. Woo. You know what I love about those waves too? They always just keep coming. That way, those waves, you, I've been out there morning, been out there noon and night. I've been out there in the middle of the night. I've been out there in good weather and I've been out there in bad weather. No matter the day nor time nor weather, guess what? Those waves keep coming. 
Do you know what I found about the love of God? It just keeps coming, baby. It just keeps coming. It don't stop. It does not stop, but it just keeps coming, and it does not end. Amen? And you need to know tonight that there's no point in which just the love of God just going to run out. Amen? You cannot uh, 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 run out of the love of God. The love of God is powerful. You know what else I found out? I've been out there in good weather, and sometimes it's calmer than others' days, isn't it? The waves won't be as big, but they're still constant. They're still steady. But you know what else I've found? In back storms coming, them waves will get bigger, won't they? You know what I found about the love of God? The love of God is always constant. On the good days, it's always constant. But what else, what, else, what else I have found out is this. On when you're going through the storms of life, the love of God will come in greater than you've ever seen before. The mercies of God will overtake you. The love of God will just come in greater and bigger and show up in ways you've never seen it before. Don't ever give out on the love of God. Romans chapter 8, it says this. Let's look at this as the love of God is powerful. What then shall we say to these things? If God God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He said through Jesus, he gives us all things freely today. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us today? In other words, when you pray in the name of Jesus, He takes that that prayer to the Father and says, Father, would you intervene on their behalf today? It goes on to say, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? This is where we see love is powerful. Say that with me. Love is powerful. Love of God is powerful. Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Paul goes on to say, he said, for I am persuaded... He said, I fully believe with all of my heart that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That tells me the love of God is powerful, isn't it? The love of God is powerful, and you know what? Just like them waves, whoo, it just keeps coming, just keeps coming, and just keeps coming. God's love is vast. God's love is unsearchable. You'll never know the ends of it. You'll never reach the end. You'll never know it all because God will show up in new ways. And God's love is powerful. No matter how big, no matter how bad you think that your sin might be. Let me tell you something about the love of God and the blood of Jesus. It will wash all your iniquities away. All your sins away today. The love of God is like an ocean. Would you come on to the music tonight? God's love doesn't run out. Amen. It just keeps coming. As we close tonight, I want to ask you a question. Do you know the love of God? What is the love of God? It's Jesus Christ, amen. That's that's how we know the love of of God. It's through Christ Jesus. The Bible says this, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And because... He loved us because He first loved us. We love Him.
That's how we know the love of God is through what Jesus Christ did on the rugged cross so many years ago. Long before we was ever created and ever born. Long before we ever even committed our first sin, Jesus died for our sin. He took our place on that rugged cross. He went through the pain. He went through the suffering. He shed His blood for all the sins of the world. Not just some, Brother Gene, not just mine, not just yours, not just a few of mine, but all of them, for all mankind. My God died, and my God rose again, and my God is seated at the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for you and I. And if all we would do, if we would just call upon His name, the Bible says this, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we would just call upon Him, we would call upon that great love. Can I tell you something? You get to know it real quick. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you right where you're at. God loves you desperately. Now let me throw this in there from my sermon this morning. He loves you enough that He'll accept you just like you are. But He doesn't want you to stay like you are neither. Amen. Don't ever, I, I, when I speak of this great love of God, don't ever think that I, it means that I can just do what I want to and that God is going to just give me grace and mercy continually. Don't take the love of God for granted. God's love is great. God's love is vast. But don't let us dare take His love for granted. And so as we close, this is how I want to give this altar call. If this sermon has touched your heart tonight in some way and you just want to come and thank God for His amazing love for you and forgiving you of your sins, I encourage you to do that. Sometimes it, it's just, we just need to bow before the Lord and say, God, thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Or maybe tonight you, you are in a place in your life and you, quest, you have been questioning the love of God for you, yourself. You've been questioning, well, does God love me? Can God love me because of what I've done? Have, have I, have I ex, uh, exhausted the love resource of God? Have I got to the end of God's love? If you've been questioning that, then you know what? You found your answer tonight, haven't you? And maybe you need to come and talk with God what's going on in your life. God had not left you and God's not forsaken you today. Know tonight that God loves you. Will you bow your heads all over the house? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for just showing up this weekend and talking with me, God. Thank you for showing up tonight and touching and ministering to some hearts in here. Lord, I believe there were some hearts that were filled with doubt. They questioned, God, your love. They questioned your mercies unto them and for them. And I pray tonight that by your truth, Lord, all those doubts have been banished. Those lies that the enemy has placed in their mind, that they are unlovable, that nobody cares about them, that they, they, are, they have just done too much for you to forgive them. I pray right now, every one of those lies have been defeated by the Word of God, by the truth. And I pray right now that, that they would move to you, Lord, and call on your name. And you would minister just as only you can. Thank you, Jesus, for this word. Thank you, God, for this people, Lord. Let them know your love to the fullest. In Jesus' name, would you stand to your feet all over the house?